What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Alexano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Well, Hey, what's going on everybody. It's Jay Campbell. And of course I am the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very, very excited today to be joined in my new and improved StreamYard virtual studio with a pretty amazing dude named Michael Smith. Michael, how are you, brother? Oh, I'm fantastic. Fantastic. How are you? Um, amazing. So you guys, I'm going to give you guys Michael's bio in a second, but as most of you guys know by now, uh, at the beginning of all of these podcasts, I am going to take a moment to first decompress and breathe. And then in the spirit of gratitude, as more and more children of the light become awakened, I will ask that this is a profound podcast that will awaken more children of the light. Namaste. Michael, it's an honor to have you here. You guys, let me give you Michael's bio. So Michael actually is a very fascinating in individual. He emailed me about a month back um, after he had read the blog or an article that my team and I wrote for the Rasha, which is obviously from Dr. Jerry uh, DeHennis Rivera, Rivera DeHennio. And he's like, dude, oh my God, you know, I, I've, I discovered base 12 math myself and I have the story of being the supreme skeptic and, you know, empiricist and, you know, data crunching engineer and stuff. And <laughs> I also was awakened. And so, you know, I saw that email and actually, as I told him off air, my assistant saw the email and she's like another one. <laughs> yeah. So another child of the light is here today uh, to grace us and everyone, of course, who watches the Jay Campbell podcast with his presence. Um, and it's an honor. Um, again, he's just basically an author, two, two time author, uh, ex engineer and number cruncher, as he said, who has a profound story of awakening that he's going to give us today. And again, it's an honor to have him. So Michael, before we jump into what we're talking about, you know, yeah. uh, obviously today is June 3rd, 2021. Um, what's your take on what is happening right now in the current, you know, geopolitical spectrum of the world, the matrix, what is going on in your eyes right now? Oh, sure. A uh, great question. And probably the, well, the best way to come at it is base 12 numerology. Um, in 2016, that's in base 10 math, you know, the way we count cycles of 10, 10 fingers, but in base 12 math, 2016 was the start of a new century in base 12. It was the year 1200, 1200. So we just finished uh, uh, a century and in base 12, it's like 12 times 12, it's 144 years. But other than that, we just finished a uh, uh, base 12 century of uh, an 1100, which is mastery of self. And we're just entering one, which is the 1200, which is new beginnings of duality. So if you look back, what's led up to this, what's, you know, the last 150 years or so, it's been very focused on mastery of self. 
but not necessarily in an enlightened way. So um, how, how these master numbers work is if we don't embrace the full, you know, try to be all we can, both physically and spiritually, it reverts to what those numbers add to, it reverts to a two. So this 11 becomes a two. So really the last century, unless for those who are more on board and opening up their awareness, it diverts to the two. It was all about duality and doing what's in it for me. It's all about competition, um, about limited abundance, limited resources. If I don't get my fair share first, I'm going to go short. So it's really resonating with this old energy. So what's interesting now, as of 2016, and any any folks coming up around that, there's a whole lot of people opening up right now, because that's resonating with a 12, uh, uh, 1200 century. Okay, so that's the new beginnings of duality, new beginnings of contrast, new beginnings of understanding our physical spiritual duality. So new beginnings of really diving into and, and embracing our whole self. And that includes anything that's coming up in, you know, with the pandemic and that there's some fascinating numerology about that as well. But anyway, with the pandemic, it's a classic case of duality. In fact, when you, um, uh, when you look at the numerology of the word virus, because every number can have a vibe and every, every word can. It's based on the positions of the letters in that word. So you add up those numbers and that's the base vibration that a word resonates with. Like the name J resonates with a vibe. Michael resonates with a vibe. So does the, uh, the word virus. And what virus represents is the master number 22. It's mastering duality. So hmm. we've got a whole bunch of folks. It's an opportunity to really explore the two sides of the coin now. Or for those who are digging in their heels, it reverts to the two plus two equals four. It reverts to, a, it's basically, uh, you know, the, the, the lower gear. And so it's all about concerns about structure and safety and security and people are encroaching on my, my rights and, and I'm being controlled. So there's really, it's almost two earths are separating right now. And when you look at 2020 in particular, so basically you're, add, you're, adding, you're adding four to um, 12. So it's the year 1204, 1204, and that adds to the seven. And the seven's all about truth about revealing the underbelly of things, right. revealing the you know um, exposure across the board. So not only what's our personal truth, but what are all these little landmines that have remained hidden for so many years? What are, what's the truth about, um, about politics, about Hollywood, about medicine? So a lot of the, the truth is being revealed. And because we're in this, we're in this new vibe, we're resonating with, you know, everyone's everyone's on high alert about exploring this duality and it's and specifically it's about the duality of structure the 12 of the four and again that four is the lower vibe of a virus so you got this sort of uh double whammy right now we've got we're in this new century of people looking at duality and exploring contrast you know hopefully in a positive way but you've got this um catalyst of of that duality and, and that tends to happen 9 11s tend to happen when we're fear-based and we're waiting for an 11 of illumination where we need that sort of traction, you know, and, and like, like, you know, Jay, it's all about balance. Vibrationally, it's about balance. You experience something, it might be a, a dark night of the soul and you have the vibrational opposite that brings you out of that. Mm -hmm. And it's always bringing you back to balance, which is the, the six of love in the middle. So really we've got this, this uh, heightened duality sense right now that started in 2016. So a lot of people are on that, are on that path. And again, no wonder a lot of people are opening up. And you've got a 2020 in particular, which is this 1204 year, the seven being the truth and, and exposure. So sure enough, this year, 2021, is the 1205, which adds to the eight. And that's about manifestation. That's about abundance, but in a new way through this duality. So everyone's redefining what it means to manifest. You know, we're doing a lot of stuff, you know, these video blogs, things like that. People are redefining how they work from home, how relationships work. Um, and, uh, you know, so so we've got this redefinition of what it is. So this is a much more positive vibe this year coming out of 2020. But that sort of sets the, you know, the vibrational tone for what we're in and why we're so easily triggered right now, to be honest. We're meant to be. 
this is that point to start shaking a bunch of apples off trees. Right. The tree shaking is in full extent. Um, yes. Awesome. There's, awesome summary. There's so apples let's, everywhere. Yeah. Let's, so we're going to get deeper into that um, later uh, in this show, but I kind of want to hear your story of being a left brain, rigorous, you know, scientific empiricist, you know, the person who was stuck, which is obviously in my opinion, um, and I'm sure you share it, you know, probably still the great majority of humanity, unfortunately, you know, so stuck in the service to self aspect of things. And, you know, my way is the right way. How did you, what happened to you that you were able to, you know, essentially overcome that obstacle? Again, Dr. Hawkins likes to say that, you know, that line of rigorous intellectuals is right at 175 on the vibrational scale, right? And, right, and right. that's what for is pride. Right. I know what I know because I went to blank Yale, Harvard, whatever Ivy League institution, and I have 15 years of education and 20 years of experience. So it's like, so many people, and, and, and you know, this is very successful people as defined by, you know, the material realm of making money and having titles and all that. This is where they stop. And I was there and obviously you were there. So how did you get beyond that? Oh, for sure. Yeah. So I'll um, back up a bit. Yeah. So I was uh, always a, a visual learner, love to see how things work, how to build. And, and so naturally I, I sort of gravitated to you know, math and sciences, I, I did well in, in high school. And then, so off I went to engineering school to be a mechanical engineer. And uh, a couple of years later, as uh, to get my degree in statistics. So basically I was a hardcore number cruncher and, um, uh, but really skeptical of everything. Like I, I had no, no real spiritual beliefs, no real, you know, Oh, nature's cool. That's neat how, you know, it's very, you know, lots of random stuff happening. But, um, you know, what's interesting, my uh, my father was an Anglican minister. So, uh, you, you know, I, I, I grew up in this family where, you know, religion and spirituality was was a mainstay. But, but to my dad's and my mom's credit, they were very open-minded about, you know, which kids pursued the path, which, you know, what religion we look into, if at all. And I was one of the, if at all. Right. I was just, you know, total left brain. I just, if I can't count it, measure it, right. grease it, or assemble it into a car, it it don't exist. Right. And so, you know, I'm going down this path. And then, um, you know, I, I began with the, you know, my my obsession with numbers. You know, originally I, I, want, I got into the quality assurance field. So it was really about seeing, using numbers, looking for patterns. I, I've always been fascinated with patterns and light and music and that. But it was really about, um, uh, you know, exploring um, the quality aspect of things. And probably that was my sort of, you know, rose colored glasses, you know, coming out of high school, you know, I'm going to change the world and, you know, production, the focus should be on quality, you know, and then, um, you know, over time, I began more and more um, uh, senior positions, but they started going from quality assurance to engineering supervision to production management roles. So you know, unbeknownst to me, I'd sort of gravitated and my pigeon, my pigeon holding myself into, you know, uh, not the, not numbers as qualities, but numbers as quantities. So I kept going to that. And, you know, at the, at the end of the day, over my 30 year um, career, I ended up working for 17 different organizations, some of the same company, but, you know, because of my, my um, abilities with numbers and so on, I became sort of a lean manufacturing expert and, you know, uh, uh, more bluntly, I was a bit of a hatchet man to be honest, to be honest. So pretty well, every job inevitably, whatever I apply for, even if they didn't say it initially, I'd end up with, um, some underperforming organization, some organization that's just ready to get sold. Another one that's just being topped up and, and getting written, going into bankruptcy, but un unbeknownst to me. So I had the this whole corporate machine is vicious. Oh, exactly. So the more I went, you know, I did well at that, but, you know, a number of times, you know, I ended up writing my own pink slip too, because, oh, good job, Mike, you know, we reduced that, but it really got, um, you know, I was so into, you know, the, the left brain skeptical about everything that, you know, I just, I got real jaded view. Mm -hmm. It was more rather than lean manufacturing. I was, it was all about mean manufacturing. Right. You know, it, it became a self-fulfilling prophecy for you. 
Oh, right? exactly. You know, and you know, often the work involved, you know, minimizing material. Oh, the do this, this, and that. You can lay off ten percent of the people. You know, so that, that was the nature yeah. of my work. So, and I didn't know it at the time, but it totally didn't resonate with me. So, you know, it always comes up in other ways, in physical ways, and emotional ways. You know, so the um, while this is all going on, I'm starting to get health issues. You know, my I didn't have you know fairly fit, average diet, but blood pressure started spiking through the roof. I started right. getting pneumonia back to back. Like I had three bouts in as many years, you know, and double pneumonia. And I'm just like, what are all these issues? So it's like, uh, um, you know, so I'm, you know, I'm disillusioned in my work. What I began as quality all about numbers. It's all about, it's a numbers game now. It's just quantity. And then during the, you know, the latter years of that, um, two of my older brothers had both passed, one in 2006 and one in 2011 um, uh, by their own actions, let's put it that way. And, uh, you know, and being, grew up in this this reserved British Canadian um, um, family and this, this, uh, this environment, we didn't really express our emotions at all. You know, in it goes, you, you lock it up. And, and that was particularly the case for me as it was for my other two brothers. You know, the eldest who had, who had passed was the oldest of six and I was the youngest. So he had moved out, you know, when he was 18. So I didn't even know him. And he showed up at the house one time, you know, and in my late, in my late teens, I didn't recognize him, but he was sort of, you know, sort of removed himself from the family. And, and but, um, you know, I ended up, um, ended up uh, exiting early. And, but, so there's one layer of one process grief. And then, um, was it like uh, five years later, another brother passed, you know, and again, it's, we bottle up our emotions, sort of un, unspoken, unrecognized depression. And sure. so, so basically this got me to 2014. I was uh, emotional, physical, and a spiritual mess. And so basically, and, you know, this, this, I would, I would say was, you know, uh, my, uh, dark night of the soul as they use that expression. And, and as you do, sure. um, then suddenly in the, um, in the summer of 2014, um, I was one night I was awoken by my brother's voice, you know, the second one who had passed and clear as a day, clear as a bell. I, I knew he had passed, but I jump out of bed and walking around like, you know, where are you? Yeah. yeah. Where am I? And what am I? Wait a minute. I'm a number cruncher. This doesn't exist. And then the next night I ended up having uh, lucid dreams with both my brothers. And again, lucid dream is where you can, you're there in a dream, someone in spirit you're communicating with, you can see and dialogue, ask questions. So it's, it's fully interactive. And, and when you have a lucid dream, you never forget it. Um, yeah. So, so I both had this dialogue and they both expressed um, basically why they, why they chose to, to leave then it sort of, Took, took off, took on a little more than they could chew. And it's, and, and one thing we may touch on later, but it's whenever we have this dark night of soul, it is all always one of our pre-planned exit points. Absolutely. So, so between incarnations, and we often have multiple dark nights of the soul. Yes. Um, in my, my case, it happened to be, be this one, but that's not always the case. But each one, these are major potentials. And we'll talk about this too in, in spirit. You know, we see all the potentials of past lives, of future potentials, and and what's going on, and we can make that choice. That can my soul continue to develop in this incarnation, or do I sort of need a reset and re? So, do you think your do you think your brothers then were basically giving you the intervention that you needed to be, before you got on the same path? Because you obviously you were headed their same path, correct? Yeah, ab absolutely, they were, and and you know, um, sure enough, my my skepticism and lack of awareness and no opposition to opening my mind. What what happens, and this is this this is true to a lot of people. What happens to be your your theme that's that's that takes you to that low place is also your um, your superpower. When you right. come through the other side, come through when you discover the love for yourself, the love inside, your connection to everything. You come down out the other side, and um, so the first um, psychic ability that opened up for me was clairvoyance was to see clearly was to have a spiritual awareness. And that often happens. You have, uh, um, so if someone has a, a, 
uh, a traumatic illness or um, self abuse issue addictions. Right. Uh, they, they that's their dark night of the soul, and they come back and they end up being a strong empath. That's the six of love on both sides. You know, and and we'll we'll touch on uh, we'll touch on your numerology too if you're open to it. It's yeah, on your course, Facebook page yeah. when your when your birth date was. Yeah, you know, and sure. yours is just as fascinating. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so really, so here I am. I've got having these lucid dreams, and then I started getting little premonitions of things that would happen days later. Then in the following weeks, I started getting um, not not in dreams anymore, but while awake, connections with loved ones, with relatives of my wife that I didn't know. I'm getting okay. I'm getting all these downloads, and again, being clairvoyant is mostly in images in my mind's eye. But also a sense of uh, sense of knowing. It's like someone just described something to me. It's like a a data dump, and that's sure. called clear cognizance. And that, as it turns out, a lot of people whose um, whose trauma or whose life path and hang up is lack of awareness. It comes out in that way, you know. So I've so you know once I'm opening up to this, I started getting obsessed with like. If you've heard of John Edward, the uh, you know the, the psychic medium, famous guy, of course. I was I would walk out of the room if I ever saw it on TV. But now I was absolutely obsessed with watching this thing. I couldn't get home fast enough, and and I and I'm still not convinced what's happening to me, or that I'm there is anything on the other side. So I'm just you know I felt like I felt like two people to be honest. But I'm obsessed about it, and at some point it just clicked that oh no, this is real and. And sure enough, John Edward, he travels all around the world, but he happened to be in Toronto, you know, local to us, uh, two weeks later. And so I said, what the heck, I'm going to buy a ticket uh, for my wife and I, although I still don't believe in anything, although my, you know, all this stuff's going on. And then um, sure enough, both my wife and I get a, you know, this profound reading. Both of my brothers come through with details and specifics of healing for us and, and, and for her. And, you know, so... Um, it's like something, you know, you get a switch, a switch clicks and I just said, no, I know this is true now. And it's, it's very bizarre. It's like my, my whole pursuit up on that point, that's just a means to an end. That's a necessary, um, uh, travel down the slope, you know, to get to that, sure. that dark place, which really isn't a dark place. It's just finding love, which right. is always hidden. And then right. you come out the other side with this new momentum. You know, and so and the the other bizarre thing that that came up was, um, I started getting this obsession with numerology. Okay, that that's still numbers, but it's the it's it's numbers as vibrational qualities, and not numbers. You know, and then um, I got fascinated with base twelve, and I kept getting drawn. And this often happens to a certain book, a certain channel, a certain person you know who's who's following a spiritual path. And I got pulled. Uh, I, I I kept running into the book from uh, Seth Speaks from Jane Roberts. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Seth channels, and she speaks about you know when when the dust settles, the prime vapor vibration that I happened upon. She actually describes it, saying not what it is, and same with Cryon. You know, I got obsessed with um, with base twelve patterns there, and and he's been saying for thirty years that it's you no, know, the universe is structured in base twelve. Everything is consciousness emerging from love. But so I had all these little sort of breadcrumbs picking from here and there to, you know, as a spiritual path often happens, once you find some little nugget, you're drawn to something else. You don't always know why you're getting obsessed about this or why am I reading this book? I read it 20 years ago, but now you read it again and you get something else out of it. And, and another one I was drawn to was uh, some channels from uh, Nikola Tesla. Um, there's, a, there's a woman in California, Frances Francesca Toman, who channels Nikola Tesla. So I'm I'm getting all this confirmation and nudging towards base 12 and getting uh, and, and looking at it through numerology. And then the other thing was getting fascinated about prime numbers. So basically numbers that are not visible by anything else. They're sort of like the, the, the quantum particles of mathematics. Right. There's nothing smaller. So I'm saying, okay, midlife crisis, I don't know what the heck's going on. You know, most people with the spiritual awakening, they follow a spiritual path and I'm saying, I'm getting pulled back into numbers, but in this qualitative way, these numbers as vibrations, these numbers as energies. So, you know, th that basically led me to, you know, I took every class I could, every every course. Uh, fortunately in our area, like as the saying goes, uh, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. 
you know, there was this amazing. So I have, so I have a question. Did, so once this yeah. happened and you're now awake and you're obviously pursuing, obviously avenues of spiritual awakening, Seth, you know, other, yeah. uh, you know, things cry on whatever. Um, how did this affect your current life? Like your, you know, your matrix life, your job, you know, the relationships yeah. that you had, I mean, did you have to turn your back on everything? I mean, did everything fall away? Were you able to maintain some sort of a balance? Cause that's, that's the gift, right? The gift yeah. is being an aware, spiritually seeking human being, but at the same time, you know, still existing in this third dimension out third dimensionality of duality and polarity where you do have to pay your bills. You do have to have a job. You do have to make money. You do have to survive, you know, right, right. instead of thrive. I mean, you can thrive in the third dimension, but obviously it takes a lot of balance, which, you know, you spoke about at the very beginning, but I'm interested to, you know, what happened to your, your matrix life at this awareness? Did everything collapse? Did it fall away? Yeah. What happened? Sure. Great, great question. Yeah. So, you know, I, I was getting all these health issues and these are coming to a head and then suddenly I have this awakening and, you know, the very next week I'm, I'd be sitting in the garage and I'm just getting, you know, it took all my intestinal fortitude to drive to work. It was like, right. this ain't for me anymore. I can't do this. Anymore. This just doesn't resonate. Not on a practical level. It was a good job, good paying job. Sure. You know, I've done it all up until then, but it was just, no, uh, I just, I just couldn't do it. It, was it, didn't just, serve you. it didn't serve you anymore it emotionally. It didn't serve me and it just didn't resonate. And I just knew it. I just knew it was time. So with the support of my amazing wife, like she's been behind me this whole time. You know, I was explaining everything as much as best I could to her, but she was, you know, so supportive that, you know, I, within a month, I, I gave my notice. I left that job and I, you know, I, I never looked back, to be honest. So it, it was really, um, in my case, and, and it, everyone's unique. In my case, okay, I was 51 years. That was that first, that was that first part of the cycle. I'm now ready to do something else, whatever the heck that is. And that's why when I when I started going down ex exploring things. And uh, you know, and you know, and we'll uh, I'll touch on probably base 12 next, but when I put all those pieces together, you know, vibrational numerology and a base 12 structure of numbers. And just looking at the prime numbers within that, this vibration popped out that seemed to match everything in numerology and even everything that I can tell in physics. And I know that's a bold claim to make, but it's, you know, I almost fell off my chair and I'm I'm still exploring it, but that's that's what led to my two books was. Well, 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 well let me stop you. There's, it's not a bold claim. You're on the Jay Campbell podcast, okay? Everything is interconnected. All things, material and immaterial, are conscious. I mean, we, this is a, uh, creating, not a created universe. Everyone has been lied to and brainwashed. This is a simulated reality in the third dimension for a very specific reason. And that is so that all beings regard again, regardless of where they are, whether a dog, a cat, a tree, a bird, a hummingbird, especially, or yeah. a human have the ability to simulate which is essentially create their reality through their words, thoughts, and actions. Because at the end of the day, literally none of us are anything more than a holographic fractal of the divine mind, which is the source field, God, conscious, you know, universal consciousness, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And when you realize the only thing that separates all of life is will and intention then you, you know, don't have to like, again, I mean, this is getting deep. We're going into like really serious, like non-devotional duality right now. But like the reality is, is that we are all, as you said, at the very beginning of the show, worrying electrons and standing waves vibrating right. at a specific level. Some of us are vibrating up here. Most of us are vibrating down here and are climbing the ladder, especially now in this new age. But like, I mean, that's not a bold statement. What you said, I mean, I will echo that like, we are nothing more than what we claim to be. Oh, and sure. if we are abundant and loving and conscious and creative and curious and all of these amazing, positively loving vibrational thoughts, they become the outcome. Exactly. Exactly. And if we're in, you know, we're in our lower place or fearful, we'll, we'll get more of those patterns. We create that. Exactly. You know, and one thing we'll touch on and what numerology really taught me, which was critical for my own journey was, yeah, we're all looking to be more aware and more enlightened, but that awareness necessarily includes 
the, the highs and the lows of the amplitudes of all these vibrations, every theme, we need to explore that lack of love to understand love fully. We need to explore duality in terms of competition and separation as well as cooperation and synergy to, to understand a whole vibration. It's like a guitar string. We either play it lightly or we strum it hard. And that's what we really need to do. And that's, you know, the universe is neutral and spirit is neutral. Everything, like you say, is, uh, is an experience off of what that neutral state is. It's all about balance. Vibration is always seeking balance. Right. And at the heart of it, that six of love, the heart of the vibration that we're going to, that we're going to explore is this, this neutral place. So any vibrations we see, we'll see a counter vibration that balances that out. So it is, yes, the path is for ascension and expansion, but that means contrast too, in both directions. That means being able to see what happens, what we can control and what we can't, and still be that neutral observer and learn from both sides. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the Optimized Tribe with US Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. As Dr. Jerry says, you know, and this is debatable. I mean, not really. I mean, you know, because it's just still a state of mind. It's where you place your consciousness. But ascension is really incension, really, because it really is, right? It's like going yeah. within to go beyond or to get out. You know, I, I, I say this every single day now to anybody that, you know, wants to listen to me. And it's literally about at this point in time, again, right now in this conscious universe, it's like, are you willing to do the work? Right. And the work is sitting there and attaining stillness or mind silence, however you look at it, on right. a regular basis. Are you doing this every single day? And obviously there's many ways to skin this cat. Right. You can go out in your backyard with your dog and just sit there and stare into the sky. Right. You know, sun gaze at 7 a.m. So the you know the the, the the radiation of the sun is not going to hurt your eyes. It can be you with binaural beats in the backyard you know, in nature with your feet in the grass. I mean, again, there was a hundred thousand ways to attain stillness, but if you don't attain stillness, um, you will be overcome by the matrix. The matrix, obviously all these, you know, various uh, positionalities from technology. Right. I mean, Michael, you know, I mean, all this stuff will completely crush you and own you as a physical being, you know, or, or essentially as a spiritual being in a physical body. And then you're pretty much before you know it, you're so pre-programmed, which is again, the masses, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's, it's hard to explain to people who I like to say are unconscious of being unconscious. Right. So it's like when you're, when you're speaking to them in ways like you and I are speaking on this podcast. Yeah. And again, the good news is that most of the people that watch the Jay Campbell podcast are following along but right. for the average person, we lost them, you know, what, what are we, 32 minutes in? We lost them at four minutes in after you started talking about your story. But I mean, the, the reality is that that's fine. There, there's no judgment to that because everybody right. is on their own path, right? And well, for we're, sure. all walking, we're all walking to the same place, back to perfection. Exactly. Some exactly. of us are walking faster than others. Some of us are at different rates and speeds. And it doesn't matter where any of us are, is because everything is happening exactly as it's supposed to in the universe. For sure, for sure, totally agree. Now, the um, uh, maybe it's a good segue to talk about, like, why base twelve? What's what? Why would the universe choose base twelve? Why would consciousness choose that? And then uh, you know we can. I've got a handful of slides we we could fire through. But for sure, figured, for sure. Figured I'll just touch on. Okay, what what's unique about base twelve, and how's that relate to numerology? And uh, yeah, so really, base twelve, it's like. Right now, the, 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 the convention is base 10, the metric system, we count in tens. It's a cycle, then once you get a cycle of 10, you know, you add a one, you move a place. So really base 12 is just, it's the clock cycle. We count in dozens instead, that's it. So it's not really any more complicated than that. But, but it, let, me, let me ask you to separate it 
was yeah. base 10 given to us by the bad guys specifically, or is it just something that we adopted universally? I have a bit different view of bad guy versus good guy. And right. to me, right. Bad, I mean, there is no bad and good. You're right. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's, it's, it's the, the, the pendulum, you know, the hermetic right. pendulum principle of like everything yeah. is swinging back and forth and it becomes yeah. good and bad and bad becomes good. Right. You're right. It's all perception yeah. too. Yeah. And it's like, it's every, everything's law of attraction, including, um, new involvement of other consciousnesses, whether it's reptilian and all the various consciousnesses that have Absolutely. that resonated with that age, you know, where, where I mentioned the century before 2016, right. It's all about this, um, the, this duality, you know, deeply immersed, totally into the contrast and duality. And, you know, in that point, that was more about me, myself and I, that time is linear. That, so does the self. Right. 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 And also that we're mortal. You know, beyond the exactly beyond the nine of completion, there's nothing. You know, so that to me, we we intuitively as a society resonated with base ten in this less enlightened time, right? Because basically, you go from zero to nine, and nine is the uh, nine is physical completion, but ten is awareness of what that completion means, you know, and then eleven is illumination. So really, that's where we're at now. That's why we're starting to base uh, resonate heavily with base twelve. So basically base 10 was perfectly appropriate to where we were as a society and as humanity and law of attraction. We attracted those sort of cir circumstances, those heavy contrasts, those heavy competitions, um, wars, terrorism, so on like that. So these are just uh, vibrational spikes that happen according to what we're learning a and to learn physical, spiritual duality. You need to go through that duality first. Right. So it is, a, it is a cycle. Yeah, so yeah, really I mean, that's a. I'm, I'm glad you said that because it's important that you know as we start going down, you know, it's. I think you know this. In in what I call five sensory perception, which is what we're leaving, to go to multi sensory perception, you know, multi dimensional yep. versus three three D people. Yep, fifth dimensional. Um, we like to identify in terms of duality, right? So good, bad, hot, right. cold, light, dark, you know. Uh, I mean, it's dark light, you know, white, black, whatever, but right. you're right. You know, it, it, if we start looking at things again, from a neutrally observed multi-dimensional perspective, there is no good and bad. Right. There is nothing that's outside. The only duality exists in the third dimension. <laughs> yeah. And in our response to things, you know, there's no drama. There's no, there's no um, fear. There's no, unless we vibrationally make it so. You know, and, you know, as far as, you know, in consciousness and spirit and I and I get messages about that and sense that anyone I connect to uh, through mediumship readings is if if you want to explore vibration deeply, you come to boot camp Earth because Earth is where it's at. It's such a heavy density because to to exist here, you always have to have a foot in 3D. You always have to have that physical uh, physical heaviness. So Earth really is a molasses type of uh, uh, type of experience. But that's how we can grow so profoundly. You know, our lows are lower and our highs are higher. Right. That's exactly. By the way, that's that's it, bro. I mean, I you know, we could end the show on that because yeah. the, 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 the the truth is is that we are here for nothing more than to evolve and grow our soul. Right. And when you can look at that from that perspective, and as you both, as we both know, it's not that easy. We can say it, right. but to do it is a whole nother thing. But like when you get to that level of awareness, that universal consciousness right. of everything is happening exactly as it's supposed to. And for the very reason of evolving and growing our souls, what's there to worry about? Enjoy the right. ride, baby. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and it takes us back when we get this, we get this bird's eye perspective of looking back at what were past traumas or past betrayals. You know, we, we see those in a new light and we say, if that didn't happen, I wouldn't have had these two wonderful kids. I wouldn't have happened this. I wouldn't have run into this person. I wouldn't have started doing these podcasts. I wouldn't have, you know, on and on and on. So all these little catalytic moments, again, these breadcrumbs that tweak us and that, that, that bring us forward, everything adolescent and, you know, and what, what, what the prime vibration says is when we're in that spiritual state back in, you know, in, in love, in that state of love, we have, there is no time. We have perceptive, we have perception of past, future potentials in the present, everything simultaneously. 
So when we revisit the past in a more loving and accepting and growing way, we're changing the past as well. We are yeah. physically changing that experience. If we look at it negatively, we're locking it back. We're, we're actually bringing it back into our present reality. We're, we're making a photocopy of it and sometimes worse. Right. You know, so it's, you know, it's, it's how we, how we play with realities, you know, because it's like the, you know, everything's a torus shape. Everything's like the magnetic fields, the human biosphere, everything is infinite potentials. What slice do you want to experience? Do you want to experience a heavy one or do you want to experience a lighter one? And we're doing that all the time, all the time. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about, if you want to read my um, birthday through my numerology, have no problem doing that. I think that would be really okay. cool. I better but make sure I have it. I better well, make no, sure we I have it right. Time. We got plenty of time. I'll give you my birth date real quick. It's uh, 22471. So I'm a Pisces. Well, I'm not a Pisces anymore. I'm Aquarius according to the new uh, yeah. Zodiac changes. But uh, two, yeah, February 24th, 1971. I am Good. now I in my check. Yeah, I, I saw decade. your. Yeah, I saw your uh, your fiftieth birthday cake on your uh, Facebook page. So I said, okay, that's it. Yeah, I was, I was hoping I had it right. Totally makes sense when you, when you see the numbers. So that's awesome. Um, as a bit of a segue for that. So again, why base twelve when you instead of base ten? Base ten, basically, um, what's the most efficient and simplest way to express the whole in terms of the parts? Basically, as above, so below. Base ten, you can only divide it in two ways by two or five. So you can divide it in half or in fifths or in 10 individual ones. Base 12 is twice as versatile. You can divide it in, in halves and thirds and quarters or in sixths. And that's basically, so just at a purely mathematical left brain standpoint, base 12 is a highly efficient and what, what they call a factorable um, energy cycle. And that's why it's so efficient. You can, uh, you can divide it up without having to get these fractional numbers, you know, if you have 10 and you want to split up with four people, well, you're getting two and a half loaves. Nature doesn't do that. It's quantum. It's got pure energies. It's got whole numbers that represent themes. Right. So base 12 inherently makes sense for nature. And, you know, and we've seen hints all along. We see it in, you know, in the structure of snowflakes, the element carbon with six electrons, six protons. That's a building block of physical life. In quantum physics, they found 12 subatomic particles and 12 antiparticles. Right. And according to what I see, that's it. They ain't going to find any more. Right. So, so don't keep building more expensive colliders. You know, <laughs> it's basically about looking at nature in its in its in its free and playful state. It's not breaking things into parts. Well, let me you ask know? you. That's a bonus question because you're the guy to ask. What are they doing with the collider? I mean, again, you know, you have all of this. You know, the what do you call it? Not the Sumerian, but, uh, you know, the symbology of, you know, the right. far East with, uh, whatever the, the goddess, the Indian goddess, I can't think of what she, her name is right now. It doesn't matter, but what are they attempting to do? I mean, again, you, you hear stories of they're attempting to warp a portal to bring in, you know, dark entities or darkness or whatever you want to call it. But what do you think they're actually doing? Yeah. yeah what I, it's just, it's, it's the search of knowledge. I don't get that vibe about, an agenda behind it. I just get it. This is where we're at basically with, you know, again, it, we're at the cusp of having a very physical approach to life to and to science. If you want to see what's in an atom, we're going to smash the heck out of it. And that's what right. we've been doing so far. And it's been, you know, it's it's been very successful. There's been a lot of great medical advancements that came from it. But, you know, after, you know, atoms breaking down protons and neutrons, and within those, there's these these quarks and leptons, these are the subatomic particles, right? You know, that as far as we can go. And then the last hurrah was, okay, how does everything get its mass? What's at the center of, you know, this, this neutral state, this scalar field, and that's that Higgs field, where yeah. they finally found in 2012, the Higgs boson. The Higgs, Higgs bison, yeah, right. Yeah. And it's, you know, so, um, so right now they've been really haven't found anything as far as new fundamental particles. They're understanding more and more of how things interact, but it's a key point to recognize when we're science mirrors humanity all the time. Like we, oh, yeah. we had a very fragmented view and oppositional view in humanity. And that's really how science has been is breaking things apart and try to try to assess the crime scene and see who was there based on how all the particles scatter. 
Thank God we haven't blown the planet up yet, dude. There has to be obviously a diviner or a divine order or nat natural existence of things keeping that from happening, right? Yeah. It's like they're they're allowing us, you know, like they what was it that you know that I, I think of that joke, you know, when we when we smashed the atoms and we detonated the first nuclear right. bomb, you know, in this era. Obviously, there was stuff in the past, but you know, they they looked at us and they're like, Oh shit, the ants are playing with atoms. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So really the you know what they're really trying to explore are the un they're not finding new particles but they're trying to say what's what's dark energy why does the universe seem to be expanding why did right. it start with the big bang what's right. dark matter why do galaxies take the shape they have so it's really more about getting these open questions and you know what i found through the this prime vibration is there are no new particles there is only one force this electromagnetic force but what we think is dark energy the universe expanding it's actually uh this double helix the universe exactly. is shaping, and it's it's rotating past so that's the dimension we don't see things rotate past and that's um, dark matter so it has a tapered effect on on galaxies and everything wants to take the shape of a torus right a a torus torus. Donut. yeah and that's right. this figure eight pattern expressing itself in all the ways it can you know so really the um yes yeah, so why don't we jump right if to if i can share the screen if you don't mind yeah you should be able to just get on the bottom just click and share yeah and then once it comes up, I think I have to activate it. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So just touching on this briefly, this is where I was mentioning the, with the base 12 cycle, a key point of this is where you see the green, the four green numbers, one, five, seven, and 11. This is where the, the prime numbers occur in that cycle. Um, so basically, if you take multiple cycles of this, this is where every prime will occur, except for two and three. Now, these are important because these are basically the structure of the base 12 cycle itself. And there are only prime numbers in that first cycle. Again, a prime being something you just can't divide into a smaller number. So it's it's numerically and energetically new, unique. So what I found when looking at it in a base 12 cycle, you see on, on, the, on the top right of that image, it forms this, this rectangular, this balanced rotational geometry. And a key point about this is it's in a two to one ratio. And that's really what ultimately dictates all this duality and contrast we see. The universe is driven by this, uh, this symmetry. But if you see base 10, in that case, the bottom, the, the bottom, uh, bottom right, primes occur at positions one, three, seven, and nine. And it's a very asymmetric pattern. So it's you know, it's not surprising that we, we haven't really been able to find true patterns of the primes in base 10. Um, so really it's, so, so I was led to, you know, to explore this and that basically um, said, okay, I'm going to graph this. What would, what would my left brain, brain do? What would a statistician do? So basically I took those four positions, one, five, seven, 11, plotted them on a graph and it, you end up getting all these, all these sine waves overlapping um but when i noticed that these pairs they collapse into just two pairs of waves so basically the, the opposite the these opposite amplitudes of 11 minus 5 uh, cancel out and so does 7 minus 1. so lo and behold i had this this very simple double helix vibration in the bottom and i'm, I'm just showing the front view but really it's it's right. a 3d it's a 3d rotation it's of course it's precisely like the uh uh, like, like DNA. So when I look at the, when I, uh, um, took a look at this relative to numerology, numerology, um, basically the simplest way to describe that is one standing wave. You touched on it, on it before consciousness yep. is standing wave. Everything's a fractal of, of vibrations at all levels of scale. So here from, you know, when I, when I overlay the, the, uh, the, the 12 energies or numbers in numerology, you know, everything seemed to fit. The zero of potential, basically it's it's off of the reality axis. It's it's the neutral axis, it's, it can't manifest yet. It's just an right. idea. And we also see the spin. The, these bottom circles are if we're looking, if we're looking at the at the side view, what is that, what is that double helix doing? Where is it pointing? Where is it rotating to? So the spin is away. So that's our sense of whenever we start something new, it's very remote. We don't have a sense of manifesting yet. Right. When we get to one, it's it's got a singular polarity above um, 
above above reality. So it's all about taking initiative, starting something new, um, having leadership. And what I'll what I'll point out is this this red line, this red curve, the pink curve that goes through it. Right. This basically, if we take the the balance point between any energy, if we if we were able to experience both waves together and added them together, that's what the red wave. It's simply by adding those two waves down to one. So that's basically our path of resonance that um, that aligns with um, this fundamental frequency. And as it turns out, it it the central frequency, everything emerges through the six of love. So continuing on for so at the two of duality, we see that the geometry of it is twice as big above the green neutral axis and one below. And this is where that sense of duality, why particles have you know, quarks have two third charges and minus one third charges. Why protons and neutrons always come in threes, two of one particle and one of the other. And then the three of the catalyst, that's of being basically the neutral observer. You're either being, you're either influencing things or you're reacting and being influenced and a victim. So really, if we, if we explore that whole energy, not, uh, not avoiding and put our head in the sand, but it, it, being being an objective observer, all of them, it's that neutral point in the middle. And sure enough, you know, that's where every, all um, all atoms are neutral. That's where we see in the the bottom arrow that that little circle at the bottom, the the uh, the force is completely down. So this is where any neutral matter, atoms, planets, stars, this is where gravity is. This is the gravity that we understand, right? But the tapered shape everywhere else, this to me is dark matter. This is when that when when that energy is when that spin is pointing more into the page, it takes this figure eight shape. And sure enough, that's what what galaxies take. They can't understand why the outskirts of galaxies rotate as fast in the inside. They should be spinning off into space. But basically, this is a it's a modified gravity that that creates this fractal. So basically, this is the this is the fractal that comes up, whether it's an atom a DNA molecule, a galaxy, or the entire universe, which I suggest is, you know, is, is this shape. And so from, from three, we get to the four, um, uh, for a structure. And this is where, uh, this is where you come in. So we see that, um, the geometry here is half as high above the, above the reality axis as below. So basically our neutral state, our best path to resonate with love, is to be more case of freedom and improvisation rather than order. But it's sort of in that midpoint below. So it's, yeah, it's freedom, but with enough order to feel safe. So really that's when you have a life path and that's what, that's what your life path in, indeed comes to. In your case of your birth date of February 24th, 1971, a life path is basically adding those three numbers uh, in base 12 um, and you get a final energy. Um, and it occurs in three stages, your, your birth month, everything we know from astrology, that's what you experience in youth from about the first 30 years or so. Your birthday, that's where in your, the hectic pace of life where you're following a daily energy. In your case, it's 24 in base 10, but that's two 12s. So that's a 20, which, which reduces to a two. So basically you've got February, which is a two. You've got your middle growth period, which is a two and your year reduces to a master 11. So if you embrace that, which you're just on the cusp of doing, is you're exploring mastery of self. Um, if you weren't on the spiritual path, it would revert to the one plus one equals two. So basically your, your, your deck's loaded to explore duality in all of its forms. And so, you know, to, to age, I, I watched your, your bio video. If I can share, obviously you shared it on your website. Of course, yeah. Yeah, I'll just pick some highlights. So basically in your in um, your first, um, your stage of youth was, you know, it, it was February, it was the two energy. You were, um, uh, as I understand it, you were named after your sibling, the firstborn who, who, right. who passed in birth and right. you were named after his middle name, Jay. Exactly. So, so even the energy and, you know, our, our higher selves and our parents' higher selves, you know, it's, it's not all happenstance how they intuitively pick names and what happens. Right. So that's right. the first two. The other two is the two resonates with, with 
competition with sports with competing with business oh yeah which, which you were totally into i think you were a triple header like and especially in basketball yep um you were you were uh i think the eldest child and your dad was uh, he was all about the duality of he too was a accomplished athlete yes same was, still like, is <laughs> yeah oh wow <laughs> yeah and an accomplished business guy and that's exactly what you are so you've got this not only the the duality of this the sort of double life passions but also the duality of you versus your dad and your dad ver and yourself versus your you know the firstborn's name you know so energetically things things are happening and then towards the end of that first period of youth that 30 year period you experienced the duality of going from health to illness where you had your your injury mm -hmm. which uh because it's a family show it's basically you were basically kicked in the two as well yep. yeah you know, and you know and so and that set you on a new path for exploring um duality and contrast from um um and lack, of health, lack yeah. of health to healing yeah. and that set you on a trajectory for for doing that and and because your numbers are so loaded with with the two of duality you're all about relationships like you can start a relationship with anyone you can resonate um i think in in high school you changed what was it five high schools yeah five high schools in five states in four years yeah 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 so you're all about resonating with duality but again in in more uh you know this pure sense you hadn't experienced the real heavy two and that came between 30 and 60. Right. you know we're just two-thirds of the way through when it's a 22 and it's not just the two of duality on its own but where it it's reduced from you know a, a larger number basically you experience that 20 that that two of duality through its full potential so basically it's on you know it's the two of duality on steroids so you see the real highs and the you know having having two wonderful children but you see the real two lows of two that divorces relation. that killed me yeah yeah the relationship that went south that you know the business you know, partnerships that unraveled yeah 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 so really so it's it's all about that duality but it it all comes back to um your overall life path which is that 13 four which is the four of structure through new beginnings of the catalyst so basically what you're here to do is as a creative catalyst of structure and you know i got a kick out of when i saw your byline on your facebook page it's architect of a new earth I'm not sure where you got that name, but that's exactly resonates with what your life path is in base 12. Uh, that, that came to me. Yeah. New Earth Did architect. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, so really this, you're this creative catalyst of structure. So, you know, the first part of your life that was in structure of, of physique and physical development of wellness. And now you're, you're expanding that to be a creative catalyst of structure in this, physical spiritual duality and expanding it beyond that and what's interesting too and this often happens is the um you know your your dark night of the soul was this uh um this destructive or unstable relationship yeah and but what brought you out of that was you met a partner or a soulmate who brings structure and stability and that's that's monica i had never met her but i can just tell and i can sense her vibe she's all about the polar opposite of what that experience represent right and i often find that is whatever our traumatic or, or traumatic experience was the the revelation we experience in the upside when we come when we when we come come on the other side is the vibrational opposite again we're we're seeking vibrational neutrality and that that's how we do it you know and, and in my case it was the total lack of uh awareness about spirituality of mortality unprocessed grief with my two brothers Right. And sure enough, my, on the other side, the vibrational opposite was having a psychic awareness, a spiritual reconnection with those who I thought I'd lost, you know, and, and same thing with folks with either traumatic illness or self abuse or addictions, they often come out of the other side with a sudden healing or a sudden sense of self love, you know, and they become, um, uh, they often become empaths. They get a heightened sense of love. And th this also applies to you too, is the, uh, when you have whatever your life path is that tends to reflect your intuitive superpower, what right. intuitive gift opens up first. So, you know, someone with a life path of 13, four, that's the four of structure of getting physical visceral response. So when you sense spirit or when you sense your higher self, 
It's like you get a tap, you get tingles, you get like physical. Literally, sensation. literally back of my neck and right arm. Okay. Yes, that makes perfect sense. My case, I had a lack of awareness. I gained psychic awareness. And, you know, and, and so mine ends up being um, clairvoyance. You know, so, so it's very fascinating. The other thing to those we attract in our life when we're ready to take the next step often complements that uh, that path. So in your case, Monica, as I understand it, she's a very accomplished um, real estate professional. Yes. Both in sales and in appraisal and so on. You right. Know, so her whole life path, not only is, does she have this positive, the po all the positive aspects of being a catalyst of structure and stability, that's indeed her career path as well. So she was exactly resonates and as your counterpoint to bring you to neutrality. You know, so it's very important in, in numerology. We, you look not just on your own numerology, but in your relationships, because that's all energy and vibration is. It's relationships. Right. It's it's finding balance. So you know, you're a you're a textbook case of how, um, you know, how really heavy things like these these duality happen, and then you get this catalytic moment, and it's all balanced out with other energies. You know, and so you're um, you're 50. Happy happy belated birthday, by the way. Thank you. Um, so at around 60 is when your your third life path, your third growth cycle happens, and that's the mastery of self. And and so as you, as you approach that, these aren't hard and fast numbers, but you, when we feel it approaching, we feel that drive. In your case, for that spiritual awakening, for okay, I need to explore or I want to explore polarity and contrast at a higher level. And so that's right where you do. You have your your feet. You're uh, very accomplished in exploring. Um, duality of, of physicality, but not only that, but how to find balance for those who don't have balance with supplements right. and with natural approaches. Right. So it's really coming at you're coming at it from a career standpoint, from an emotional standpoint, uh, from a relationship standpoint with Monica, and an overall life path standpoint. So it's you know it's a, when I see a very loaded deck like that, when you take on a heavy path like that, and like mine, you know with with you know. Uh, two losses of brothers like that it's often a sign of uh you know an old soul who's taken on a lot and oh we're definitely old souls there's no yeah. doubt i don't think anybody that's at the level of you know heightened awareness now is not a long time walker and seeker on the path and i would actually guess that we are probably tapped on the shoulder to go back to help oh. others you know and obviously oh, there's exactly. there's lessons for our souls to learn of course too but uh i think that i think that people like us and again it's just my opinion and maybe it's a little egoic but i think that people like us are here to show other people the way you know again children right. of the light right that's what i kind of think yeah now one thing if if we take a giant step back from this you know this figure eight this baseball numerology cycle you know it's when you just see the, the pattern overall it's you know, it looks very asymmetric. It looks imbalanced, but really as much as above is below. The two of duality is halfway above more so than below. So it's more about relating and cooperating, but not to the point of giving away our, our power. The catalyst of the three is being neutral in all circumstances and finding that objectivity, whether it's stuff happening to you or, or happening for you. The four of structure, your life path is more about you know, the bottom half of the cycle of being more flexible and improvisational rather than order. And by the way, whatever your life path is, that's our hot, hot button too. So like the, the pandemic, the virus, which resonates with four, that hits all of your buttons in a loud way. <laughs> you know, and that's, that's how it happens. Whatever our life path is, it's not only our, our you know, our, our spiritual superpower, it's also, we, we want to continue learning that throughout our lives. So whenever you get a sense of imposed structure or people are imposing, especially when it relates to phys physical healing, such as um, vaccines, you really resonate with that. So the real balancing act is, okay, what, what's that telling me? Why, why am I resonating that much? How can I, how can I channel that understanding for, um, you know, for both sides of the pictures? And you do that masterfully, like these podcasts, you have no filter on who you bring on, what you what you explore, whether it's scientific, purely spiritual healing about water, um, even controversial controversial uh, um, theories. So it's that's 
that's really finding that structure and duality and balance is being able to see it all, but use your own discretion and allow all your viewers to, to use their own uh, discretion to find what makes sense for them. You know, so it's a very, very powerful thing. And now when we get to the five of five of change, this first half of the cycle, the, you know, the left butterfly wing, if you want to call it, you know, we've gone from zero to five. These are very physical themes. And when we get to the five, we see between from five to six, that's where the six of love uh, drops below reality. That's why we have, you know, loves this, this super powerful force we feel, but we just can't put our finger on it. So when we get to some catalytic or traumatic experience that gets us to the five, we know we have to change to explore, but all we see is this literally this black hole of right. unknown, of mystery. So it's literally, it's, it's to find love, you literally have to fall in love, but to, but to fall into this black area. And this, you know, at the five, this is often where people make those decisions. Okay. I just can't break through this. So I'm, you know, this is going to be an exit point. Right. So really, this is that this is that catalytic point. If you can get through the five and see six, you explore the six, and you just have to see the geometry of the six. That's a intersection where polarities are canceled out. You see the flow of the arrows. This is where both directions. There is no, there is no time. There is no sequence. That's why everyone has that sense of when you're in love or when you're doing something you love, any passion. It, it's timeless. You lose track of time. You're in the zone. And and as you see where the love, it's basically where I put the heart shape. Those are the two waves, that intersection point adding together. So if we're only giving love, being compassionate, helping others, basically the black line going towards six, but we're not allowing love, receiving love, we only get halfway down to the potential of love. So really that's why, you know, it's a challenge with love is to give and receive love is to resonate fully with that energy. To do only half of it, yes, we're still experiencing love, but it's a limited version of it. Michael, okay. this has been such a profound podcast and I literally will have to do another one with you because I have a hard stop right now that I have to jump off. But um, no if worries. people want to connect with you or work with you, like where is the best place to send them? Yeah, just um, my website, it has has all the links. It's Michael Smith, the number 12.com. Okay, you guys heard that Michael Smith, the number 12, one, two. So Michael Smith, one, two.com. Please go to his website. As you guys could see, this is a very, very profound and passionate man who has obviously broken down uh, base 12 about as well as anybody that I know of. And I wish I had more time right now, but uh, I will have him come back. Michael, I will be in touch with you as soon as I jump off this podcast so that you and I can connect. But Fantastic. again, guys, support the amazing people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.